Let us deal with the issue of legalization of drugs. How do you see America changing for the better under that system? I see America with half the number of prisons, half the number of prisoners, 10,000 fewer homicides a year, inner cities in which there's a chance for these poor people to live without being afraid for their lives, respectable citizens who are now or citizens who might be respectable who are now addicts, not being subject to becoming criminals in order to get their drug, being able to uh, get drugs for which they're sure of the quality. You know, the same thing happened under prohibition of alcohol as is happening now. Under prohibition of alcohol, deaths from alcohol poisoning, from poisoning by uh, things that were mixed in with the alcohol, the illegal bootleg alcohol, went up sharply. The effect of criminalization and making drugs criminal is to drive people from mild drugs to strong drugs. In what way? Well, you make take marijuana. Marijuana is a very heavy, bulky substance, and therefore it's relatively easy to interdict. The, uh, the warriors on drugs have been more successful in interdicting marijuana than, let's say, cocaine. So marijuana prices have gone up. They've become harder to get. There's been an incentive to grow more potent marijuana. And people have been driven from marijuana to heroin or cocaine or one or the other, or crack. Why was crack created? Because cocaine was so expensive that the preferred method of taking cocaine... I'm not speaking from personal experience. I've never touched any of this stuff. I'm speaking from what I've read in, in the literature. But the preferred method of taking cocaine, which I understand was by sniffing it, snorting it, became very expensive. And they were desperate to find a way of packaging Young cocaine. entrepreneurs. Absolutely. Of course they're entrepreneurs. The, look, the people who are running the drug traffic are no different from the rest of us, except that they are have more entrepreneurial ability and less concern about not hurting other people. They're more irresponsible in that way. But they're in a business, and they're trying to make as much money as they can. And they discovered a good way to make money was to dilute this crack with baking soda or whatever else, I mean cocaine, whatever else they do, I don't know the procedure, so that they could bring it out in $5 and $10 doses. All of the experience with legal drugs is that there's a tendency for people to go from the stronger to the weaker and not the other way around. Just as you go from regular beer to light beer, uh, that's a tendency that there is from, from uh, cigarettes without filters to, silver, to low tar. During Prohibition, when I was a teenager, <coughs> I, Prohibition was repealed in 1933 when I was 21 years old. So I was a teenager during most of Prohibition. Alcohol was readily available. Bootlegging was common. Any idea that alcohol prohibition was keeping people from, from drinking was absurd. There were speakeasies all over the place. But more than that, we had this spect spectacle of Al Capone, of the hijackings of the gang wars. Anybody with two eyes to see could see that this was a bad deal. That you were doing more harm than good. Now, it's in addition, I became an economist. And as an economist, I came to recognize the importance of markets and of free choice and of consumer sovereignty and came to discover the harm that was done when you interfered with it. The one negative feature of legalizing drugs is that there might be some additional drug addicts. However, I want to qualify that in still another one. The child who shot in a slum in a, in a pass-by shooting, in a random shooting, is an innocent victim in every respect of the term. The person who decides to take drugs for himself is not an innocent victim. He has chosen himself to be a victim. Mm -hmm. And I must say, I have very much less sympathy for him. Let I us am turn not then. willing, I am not willing to impose, I do not think it is moral, to impose heavy costs on other people to protect people from their own choices. There are an enormous number of innocent victims now. You've got the people who are, uh, whose purses are stolen, who are bashed over the head by people trying to get enough money for their next fix. You've got the people killed in the random drug wars. You've got the corruption of the legal establishment. You've got the innocent victims of the taxpayers who have to pay for more and more prisons and more and more prisoners and more and more police. You've got the rest of 
who don't get decent law enforcement because all the law enforcement officials are busy trying to do the impossible problem. And, not last but not least, you've got the people of Colombia and Peru and so on. What business do we have destroying and leading to the killing of thousands of people in Colombia because we cannot enforce our own laws? I'm an economist, but the economics problem is strictly tertiary. It's a moral problem. It's a problem of the harm which government is doing. Look, I have estimated statistically that the drug, prohibition of drugs produces on the average 10,000 additional homicides a year. It's a moral problem that the government is going around killing 10,000 people. It's a moral problem that the government is making into criminals people who may be doing something you and I don't approve of, but who are doing something that hurts nobody else. Most of the arrests for drugs are for possession by casual users. Now, here's somebody who wants to smoke a cigarette, a uh, mar uh, uh, joint, a marijuana cigarette. If he's caught, he goes to jail. Now, is that moral? Is that proper? I think it's absolutely disgraceful that our government, supposed to be our government, should be in the position of converting people who are not harming others into criminals, of destroying their life, putting them in jail. I don't see, that's the issue to me. The economic issue is strictly, the economic issue comes in only for explaining why it has those effects. Is there anybody who will deny that you can expect every person to pursue his own personal interest? Now those personal interests don't have to be narrow. Mother Teresa is pursuing her own personal interest just as much as, as Trump is pursuing, Donald Trump is pursuing his. But they're both pursuing their personal interests. The person who decides to take drugs for himself is not an innocent victim. He has chosen himself to be a victim. Mm -hmm. And I must say, I have very much less sympathy for him. Let I us am turn not willing, I am not willing to impose, I do not think it is moral, to impose heavy costs on other people, to protect people from their own choices. For us to understand the real root of those, of those beliefs, how about if we just talk for a minute about free market economic perspective, that perspective, and how you see the proper role of government in its dealings with the individual. The proper role of government is exactly what John Stuart Mill said in the middle of the 19th century in his essay of On Liberty. The proper role of government is to prevent other people from harming an individual. Government, he said, never has any right to interfere with an individual for that individual's own good. Look, if you write here, the case for prohibiting uh, 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 drugs is exactly as strong, as strong and as weak as a case for prohibiting people from overeating. We all know that overeating causes more deaths than, than drugs do. Why, can't, why, why isn't it perfect if it's, if it's, if it's in principle? okay for the government to say you must not consume drugs because they do you harm. Why isn't it all right to say you must not eat too much because you do harm? Why isn't it all right to say you must not try to go in for skydiving because you're likely to die? Why isn't it all right to say, oh, skiing, that's no good. That's a very dangerous sport. You'll hurt yourself. Where do you draw the line? See, the role of the government, if you look at it from a purely economic point of view, the role of the government is to protect the drug cartel. That's literally true. Is it doing a good job with it? Excellent. Why, what do I mean by that? In an ordinary free market business, let's take potatoes, beef, anything you want, there are thousands of importers and exporters. Anybody can go into the business. But the drug, but, but it's very hard for a small person to go into the drug importing business because our interdiction efforts essentially make it enormously costly. So the only people who can survive in that business are these large metal and cartel kind of people who have enough money so they can have fleets of airplanes, so they can have sophisticated methods, so on. So in effect, in addition to which, by keeping goods out by, and by arresting, let's say, local marijuana growers, the government keeps the price of these products high. So what more could a monopolist want? He's got a government who makes it very hard for all his competitors, and who keeps his, the price of his product high. It's absolutely heaven. What scares you the most 
about the notion of drugs being legal as Nothing treated like scares alcohol. me about the notion of drugs being legal. Nothing. What scares me is a notion of continuing on the path, path we're on now, which will destroy our free society, making it an uncivilized place. There's only one way you can really enforce the drug laws currently. The only way to do it is to adopt the policies of Saudi Arabia, Singapore, some other countries adopt, in which a drug addict is subject to capital punishment, or at the very least having his hand chopped off. If we were willing to use penalties like that, well, would that be a society you'd want to live in?